For the following exercises, solve the equations below and express the answer using set notation. Okay, so we've done tons of these types of problems, so just more practice for you. If this is your first time doing absolute value problems like this, go check out a couple of the previous videos that we've done. These are just like more in-depth problems, I guess. So if you're having trouble with these, there's, there's easier ones for you guys to start off with. So let's get down to it. So the first one, we have the absolute value of one half x minus five, and that all equals 11. Okay, so like in algebra, the object of the game is to solve for x, right? Now, everything on the left-hand side is trapped in between this absolute value sign. And remember, what an absolute value sign is, is that whatever this, this input is over here, whatever this is equal to, right, always is going to equal to a positive number. That's what the absolute value is telling you. So in this case, it's saying whatever is in here equals 11. It's the positive 11. However, it could have been equal to negative 11. But since the absolute value, the function is always going to give out you out a positive, it's going to change that negative 11 into a positive. Okay? So that's just what the absolute value function is. It just turns whatever number it is and makes it into a positive. Now, I can't really progress further if I want to solve for x here. Everything on this side is trapped in between this absolute value function. So when that happens, we are going to split up the formula. And that's how we get rid of the absolute value. We're going to make two equations now. Because technically, one of the equations was what it was stated. It was stated as 1 half x minus 5, and that equals 11. But just like we said before, right, what happens if this was equal to a negative 11? The absolute value is going to plug that in and turn it into a positive number. So we could have had a secret 1 half x minus 5 equals negative 11, in which we have to solve for x. So once you can't progress any further and everything is blocked by this absolute value, you split your equation into two separate equations, one equaling the positive answer and one equaling the negative answer. So we're going to have two answers here. So let's work with the one on the left-hand side first. So I still want to solve for x. It's multiplied by a half, and it's minus 5. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to plus 5 on both sides to get that out of the way. 1 half x equals 11 plus 5 is 16. So now I have a 1 half times x, and I want to get x by itself. So if I want to multiply, if I'm multiplying by 1 half, I have to do the opposite. So you could say divide by 1 half. I personally, if I can just move this over a little bit, with fractions, I just like to multiply by the inverse. So here I'll just say, okay, well, I could put the 2 on top and the 1 on the bottom. The 2s are going to cancel out, and the 1s are going to cancel out. But whatever I did, I essentially multiplied by 2, I have to do on this side as well, 2 over 1, if you want to keep the fraction. But 2 over 1 is the same thing as 2, so we're just multiplying by 2. So in this case, x equals 32. 16 times 2 is 32, and that is your first answer. Now we just got to do the same for this guy over here. You want to solve for x. I'm going to plus the 5 first to get rid of that. So this would be 1 half x equals a negative 11 plus 5 is, what is that? Negative 11 plus 5, negative 6. And we do the same thing. We want x to be by itself, right? It's being multiplied by 1 half. With fractions, I just like to multiply by the opposite. So 2 over 1 instead of 1 over 2, the 2s will cancel, the 1s will cancel, and whatever you did over here, you just do on the other side. So times it by 2 over 1, which is essentially 2. So you're just multiplying by 2. So your new answer would be x equals a negative 12. Negative 6 times 2 is a negative 12. 
And there is your two answers. However, this question said we have to use set notation. Well, what is that? It's just a fancy way of representing your answers. What you're going to do is you have to put it in brackets. And set notation is always with increasing numbers. So you're going to put the lower number on the left and the higher number on the right. We have a 32 and we have a 12, a negative 12. A negative 12 is less than 32. So we start with the negative 12. And when we want to say a new number, we just put a comma and then 32. And that is your final answer for this one. Look at that, guys. One down. Two more to go. Let's move on to the next one. This one says the absolute value of 1 3rd x plus 5 equals 14. Well, it looks like the same thing is happening, right? Everything on the left-hand side is being trapped between that absolute value. So I'm, I'm kind of stuck, right? I want to solve for x, but it, everything on this side is trapped inside that absolute value. Oh, but wait a minute. I can break this up into two equations. One is going to be the positive 14, and the other one is the negative 14. So there we go. One third x plus 5 equals 14, and then one third x plus 5 equals negative 14. And there are your two equations, and I strip away the absolute value, and now I'm ready to solve for x. Let's work on the one on the left first. I still want to solve for x. It's a plus 5, so I'm going to subtract 5. That will cancel. So I'm left with 1 third x equals 14 minus 5 is a 9. And now, it's good practice with fractions. You want to get x by itself. It's being multiplied by 1 over 3. So just flip the fraction. I can times it by 3 over 1, which is essentially 3. The 3's will cancel, the 1's will cancel, and whatever you do, let's just put it on the other side. So 3 over 1 is 3, so I'm just timesing it by 3. So x equals 27. One answer down. Now let's work on the next one. We still want to get x by itself. It's a plus 5, so minus 5 on both sides. 1 third x equals, this will cancel, and we got negative 14 minus 5 now, which is a negative 19. I want to get x by itself. It's still being multiplied by that 1 third, so flip it on them, right? Times it by 3 over 1. The 3's will cancel. The 1's will cancel. So you're just left with x on this side, and 19 times... 3 over 1, a.k.a. just 3, negative 19 times 3, right? So this would be, let's see, 30 plus 27, so negative 57. And I just want to triple check. Yep. Perfect. And those are your two answers. But set notation says that we have to put it in these fancy little brackets. And negative 57 is way less than 27. So I will start with the negative 57, comma, 27. And that, my friends, is it for that one. So the math isn't that bad. It's just breaking it up or, or knowing when to break it up. Okay, let's look at this one now. Ooh, this one looks a little bit more challenging negative absolute value of 1 third x plus 5 plus 14 equals 0. Ooh, okay. So remember, name of the game is that we want to solve for x. It's all being trapped in between that absolute value. So it looks like I can do a couple of things. I, in order to split the equation into two, just like we did on these guys, I have to have just the absolute value on the left-hand side. I have two things. I have this negative that I have to bring over to the other side. And I have this plus 14 that I have to bring onto the other side. The question is, you know, which one do we do first? 
Now remember that this negative is just saying that there's a negative 1 being multiplied by the absolute value. Now would I, if I just keep that here, negative 1, would I divide everything by negative 1 first? Or would I subtract 14? The answer is you would subtract 14 first because this negative 1 is only being multiplied with the absolute value. The negative 1 is not being touched by that 14. So I can't just divide by the whole negative 1 because the 14 has nothing to do with the multiplication. So I will subtract 14 on both sides first. These go bye-bye. So now I have negative 1, and I will put that in because that's going to get a little rough. 1 third x plus 5 equals a negative 14. Okay, now I have to do something with this negative 1. And just like we said before, it's being multiplied by this um, absolute value. So I will just divide by negative 1. That will cancel the negative 1 out. But whatever I do on that side, i got to do on this side, right? So I have the absolute value of 1 third x plus 5 equals 14. Now I have everything trapped underneath this absolute value. Now I can finally break up the two in, into the two equations. So 1 third x plus 5 equals 14. And then I have 1 third x plus 5 equals a negative 14. And just for simplicity's sake, you guys can try it. But if you noticed, they gave us this is the same thing as this, right? Do you see how this is the same? The 1 third x, and I'm just triple checking, the 1 third x plus 5 is the same thing as this. So it would give you the same answers. So on this side, we get x equals 27. And on this equation, we get x equals negative 57. So our set notation would be the same, negative 57, 27. And that is the answer. Look at that, guys. I think what they tried to do here was they tried to trick you um, with this negative 1 and the negative 14, but they, they can't get us, right? They can't get us. So that's the end for this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments, all right? Uh, keep studying hard, and if this helped you, you know, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. It would really mean the world to us, and, and thank you so much from the, from the bottom of our hearts. And I'll see you guys all in the next video, all right? Happy studying. Bye-bye.